perfect timing. Hey everyone, HP has decided to spring for the big band. That's very nice of them. That's all I really wanted was a big band. Welcome. Welcome to my latex presentation. My name is Timothy Mitchell, and I'm going to introduce you today to four new printers. HP has been very busy, and we have a lot of new talent. I loosely call them the Beatles, you know, four printers. We have Ringo over here, the 700. Then we have John, the 700W, because I guess White is a songwriter credit. George, very important, 800. And then, did I say John? No, no, I got that wrong. Paul's over there. John is the 800W. My goodness, I can't even remember my own printers. Welcome to my presentation. I'm going to explain these printers. I'm going to explain what's new about them. I'll explain our new technology. And uh, we'll have a little fun along the way. The four printers have almost everything in common. They are new. They have new ink. They have new print heads. They have new white ink. They have a whole host of new features and upgrades and changes and innovations, which is exactly what you would expect from HP. The printers are remarkable, and I think you can look at them as a breakthrough printer. It's not a refinement. You know, we haven't changed the color on the cowling and made a few modifications. Oh, no. This is new. This is innovative. And this really is a breakthrough technology. Every year we get better. We're an ink chemistry company. We develop our own inks. We also develop our own print heads. In fact, everything on this printer really, top to bottom, is an HP innovation. I think the X-Rite spectrophotometer might be one of the few products on the printer that we didn't develop. But however, our color software runs it. We take the data from the spectrophotometer and we utilize it to get beautiful, gray balanced, perfect color. I think you're gonna be very impressed with what you see. I'm gonna move through these one by one, but first I think probably the best way to do this is to sort of explain why they're different. And if we can get some of the differences out of the way between the 700 series and the 800 series, I think that will help understand them a little better because everything else they hold in common. The one difference obviously is white ink. The 700W, the W denotes white, same is true on the 800 over here. It indicates that it has the white capability. We add two additional white heads and keep in mind when you're running white, you have a white printer, it doesn't mean your six color is any slower. They run the same speed. So the 800 series and the 800W running a CMYK, a poster image with no white are exactly the same speed. Very key. Also notice everything here, it's all front loading. Front and center, easy to access. You don't have to roll the printer out from the wall. You don't have to get behind it. Access to your ink, access to all of your supplies, access to everything, taking the media on, removing it. It's all right in front. That's a hallmark of latex and we've retained that. Let me show a couple things that are a little different. The 700 series utilizes a box of ink that's one liter. It's not 775 anymore. It's one liter and notice the packaging. Environmentally friendly, no plastic. We're always very focused on making our sustainable and our green commitment. And we do that every time we release new products. So you have a one liter on the 700 series. Now, technically you cannot hot swap ink with a 700. You can, however, place it in when it runs out I use the PrintOS feature of uh, PrintBeat, which manages my printers. It sends me a notice, like I know I am very close to running out of ink on, uh, on Paul over there on the 700W. I have 1% <laughs> yellow left, and uh, it could run out when I do a print here in a second, so that's why I have the yellow on top. And when it does, it can stop in the middle of a print. I can put the yellow in, the printer will resume printing. You will not see where it stopped, because our friend, the optimizer, yes, we still utilize optimizer, will hold everything in place. Nothing will bleed, nothing will run, no coalescence, and you'll get a nice, perfect print. The 800 series 
uses the big boxes. So 800 series, three liter, and these have reserve tanks built right in the printer. They're not on the front anymore. They're actually inside the printer. And inside the printer, these complement it. They hang on the outside. They're right here along the front. In fact, I have a nice little vignette of that. So you can get a, a good look at the boxes and where they sit. And those are three liter boxes. And this is the one liter just so that I have it handy. And that's where they are. Six color printers, as always. I think we can take my title slides down now that you all know who I am. And thank you. Welcome. The one liter box is always going to cost a little less per liter. So when you when you when you uh, do a three liter box, per liter cost is going to be less than one liter. It costs less to run the 800 than the 700 for your ink costs. Also, you can do longer runs. There's less of a concern about running out of ink. You have the reservoir tanks there, and you can hot swap them. Another difference between the two printers, they're all fast. I mean, consistently, all of my production operation speeds are up over 200 square feet an hour in almost all cases. And occasionally, when I dip down, it's right under it. The difference is the 800 is a slightly longer curing unit, and as a result, it's a little quicker. It's a little faster. It's 15% faster with the 800. So larger, larger box of ink, and the printer is faster. Another difference is the take-up reels are a little bit different structurally. They function exactly the same. Dancerless, spindleless, and they all have the new built-in variable tension motor into the take-up. They're just positioned a little different. And when we open everything up, I'll give you a nice detailed account of that. Trust me, I'll explain it. But they're just a little different in the structure, and that's all. Another difference, which probably shouldn't be underestimated, is our friend the status beacon. Now, I'm going to send a job here. This is kind of cool. Since I'm here, I'll do it. We have a new front panel. It's been completely redesigned, very large, solid-state hard drive. I, I think it's about 500 gigabytes, so it's, it's big, and it holds a lot of files. Well, I send jobs all the time to these, and I have one here on the uh, 800, and I'm just going to hit print, and away it goes. You know how I know it's going? Because the green light is blinking. If I were running out of ink, it might have a, a yellow light blinking, telling me, hey, you're uh, going to run out of maintenance cartridge, you're going to run out of ink. And if it stopped, red light. Green solid means it's just sitting, it's ready to go. So if you're a production manager, you can look across your floor and know everything that's going on. That is the status beacon. It's like a, an Hermes tie or a, one of those fancy metal credit cards. It's an exclusive club. The 700 series does not have an upgrade to get into that exclusive club. So if you want the status beacon, and some people do, you have to get it. When you get an 800 series, you cannot upgrade a 700 series. Those are the differences. Everything else, it's the same. Everything else works the same way. We all have the new ink, and the new ink is phenomenal. The new ink is something that we develop. And the first noticeable innovation with this ink is it cures at a much lower temperature. How much? About 30%. It's noticeable. I run a lot of medias. I mean, you've probably seen a lot of my videos. I probably run more rolls of media through latex printers than anybody in North America, maybe the world. I run a lot of rolls. And one of the things I noticed is there's material that's temperature sensitive. It just is. Um, a lot of super smooth banner, PET banner, polypropylenes, polyethylenes, um, certain monomeric vinyls, monomeric vinyls with a window perf. What happens is you're printing and the temperature causes the material to warp. You have to lower the temperature. And when you do that, you have to adjust the speed and the ink load. And you know it requires some finesse. Now, I've made some videos on it, but it's still not out of the gate. You have to play around with it a bit. And you guys are busy. People in this industry are on tight deadlines. When you lower temperature 30%, it changes everything. 
The way the printer runs is different. The way it responds is different. You are less subject to running media specific presets and you can use generics for just about everything all day long because I do now. Our generics are beautiful and they work with almost everything I load in the printer. I mean, I might clone it and rename it and make a couple minor adjustments, but by and large, when you lower the temperature that much, it changes the way all of the prints work. Every time we release new latex products, we try to lower the temperature. We want everything dry off the printer. That's a hallmark of latex technology. You don't want it to be sticky. You don't want it to be sticking to itself on the take-up roll. You don't want to be dependent on coatings. You want to be able to print and have it come off the front of the printer and be completely 100% dry. Oh, I have a red light. Why do I have a red light? Let's reprint this. You want everything to be completely dry. And if everything is completely dry off the printer, you don't have to worry. You can go straight to lamination. You can do anything you want with it. That is one of the key advantages of printing with latex. And so lowering that temperature and allowing us to cure at a lower temperature is a big innovation. And I think it really deserves a, a, a high notice. I've enjoyed it immensely running all of these printers. The second big advantage, in addition to lowering that temperature, is that we have a higher color gamut, a noticeably higher color gamut. We have some of the best pigment scientists in the world, and they're able to lower the temperatures and in combination, increase the gamut on a six color printer. In most Pantone instances, we are under three delta E. Lowering the temperature is a big deal and so is an increased color gamut. The two together, they reinforce one another. It allows me to run faster, using less liquid, but getting more color pop. And materials that will take a little temperature, like most scrim banners, you can run them really fast. In some cases, I'm running most of my scrim banners at four pass, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of 388 square feet an hour, and the color pop and the saturation is all there. I am not lowering that saturation and color pop because I have to be able to put uh, a temperature balance, or I can only put so much heat in the, in the speed because the ink isn't drying. None of that. Everything is dry, and the colors are spectacular. And then the third real quality of the ink that we've developed is it's modular. Oh. What's modular, you say? <laughs> I've got a little video for you. I think you'll like this. It's called Modular Ink. So modular ink is like a trio. It's three components. We have our old friend, the optimizer, which we've had on latex printers since Gen 3. Now we have our expanded color gamut under the color. And then we have the overcoat. Now what is the overcoat? Well, it forms the basis of a modular ink, which is just like a modular trio. <laughs> Hold on. We had a lot of requests for jazz flute, so I, I made sure we put some in. Modular is simple. It means if you're going to laminate, like with a vehicle wrap, turn the anti-scratch off. If you're not going to laminate, like what I have behind me here, then you're going to turn the anti-scratch on. So what's anti-scratch? Anti-scratch is overcoat. On a Generation 3, we built the best scratch resistance in the market, but it was built into the ink, which for almost all printing is perfect. But if you want to use liquid lamination or film lamination, now that anti-scratch is in between your lamination and the ink. And so what we said is, well, why don't we just separate it out, give it its own print head, give it its own ink slot. We only need a trace amount of it. It sits on top. It's the last thing. And then you turn it on by default. I mean, I have it running through most of the stuff here. But if this Avery behind me here, the Avery uh, 2903, if I wanted to laminate that, I don't need an anti-scratch because the laminate now is the anti-scratch. So I turn the overcoat off. Overcoat is effectively modular anti-scratch. Yes or no. If you're going to laminate liquid or film, you don't need it. 
we call it overcoat because, you know, it has other sort of functions. And really what it does too is it sits right on the top. It's not commingling in the ink anymore. It is a top finish. You only need a little bit of it. You almost use always the same setting and you get fantastic results, our hallmark anti-scratch. That's what I have behind me with Phototex. We didn't laminate that, but if this were done in say uh, 3M IJ40 matte, yeah, we might laminate it. And in that case, you turn it off. So the inks cure at lower temperatures. They have a significantly larger color gamut and it's a very noticeable color gamut. And then also they're modular. The anti-scratch can be turned on or off. That is the fundamental innovation in ink. That's the ink component. Next, print heads. We are a print head manufacturer. I'm gonna wander over here and take a look and say, task has a time limit. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. That's what I did. Hang on a second here. All right. We're back online. I wanted to do this live. I wanted it to be fun. Every once in a while, you just run into things you don't anticipate no matter how hard you plan. And that is the nature of digital printing. Press the wrong button. Has a little front panel and you know what? Since I'm here, let me show it to you. It's kind of cool. I have the front panel. So you can do very simple reprints right on the front panel. And the front panel, I'm a little slow here. You just initiate it because you've sent the job. I've sent you know the same one many times. You lay it all out, you get all your tiles done, and then you send it to the to the printer and it stays on here. So you have access to it over and over again. So I don't have to go to Onyx, which by the way, Onyx does come with the printer. First year is free, subscription after that, but the latest and greatest Onyx, they come with these printers. I don't have to go to Onyx and send the file because the file is already there and it's waiting for me and ready to go. The file is also ready over here on this printer and I hit reprint. This is gonna run out of ink any moment and that's fine because I'll just put a fresh box in and I'll show you how that works. Very simple process. Let's move on, the print head. We have innovative, we are a print head manufacturer. We came up with a new print head. I even have a nice little picture of it. Here's the new print head. It looks like this, comes in a nice little box. Open it up. All of our, you know, latex still, water-based, user replaceable, inexpensive, durable, reliable, easy to use, but now with 3000 nozzles. And I'll do my little nozzle thing here. The nozzles, have a constant micro circulation that's what that is and they're always circulating and we change the nozzle shape for a reason we're not circular anymore we are figure eight or infinity or bow ties that shape matters and it makes things easier to jet the droplets do not have trails or artifacts you eliminate aerosoling you eliminate a little overspray when we introduce the microcirculation, which is a continual circulation in the printhead, think of it like ink never sleeps. It's always moving. Even in hibernation, it circulates. It is a constant circulation, and that constant circulation means that I can uh, reduce the size of the drop. Instead of a 12 picoliter drop, it's 10. So we bring the size down. Constant circulation within the printhead, smaller drop size for finer, clear. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at four point text and I'm pretty happy. Everything is a little bit different. We have more nozzles. I will try to show you a little difference here between this is the existing generation and this is the new one. The new one has 3000 nozzles versus 2112 for the existing gen three. When you look at the whole printer, you're almost looking at twice as many nozzles. What that means is the printer is still, we go through our system of optical drop detection, it's checking the nozzles, but you have far more of them. So we have a longer print head life. We're expecting six liters in the field. 
and the CMYK light sand light magenta is warranted for 1.5 liters. White ink is a little different on the life expectancy and the warranty. That's because white ink is different. And you have to think of it differently, and we did, and I'll explain that next when I discuss the white ink. So we have a longer warranty and we have longer life expectancy in the field, a smaller nozzle, a different nozzle, smaller drop size, microcirculation, and then all the classic expectations, you know, easy to use, replaceable, inexpensive, durable, all of the hallmarks of water-based thermal printhead. That's what we invented, that's what we developed, that's what we make. So the printhead is pretty cool. New ink, new printhead to complement it. Now we're gonna do white ink. White ink we introduced with our latex flatbed, and then we bring it now to the roll-to-roll -roll printers. And I'm gonna switch cameras a little bit to do this because I want to, uh, I want to show you the, the printer that does most of the heavy lifting. In this case, this is John. This is the 800W. This is our flagship, fastest, has all the white ink. Again, I'm going to use my front panel right there, and I'm just going to hit reprint. Hit print there. Uh, what I'm doing here is I am printing um, white overcoat on a 3M clear film certified film. I downloaded it right into the printer. I've run a whole bunch of them. General Formulations, Avery, um, Dry Pack, all runs beautiful. The white ink has two hallmarks that I think make it completely remarkable. The first of which is the brilliance and opacity is outstanding. And I have a lot of charts that can verify that. Um, what we do is we try to print our opacity charts, which you can see, this is done on an Avery clear film, shows up the same on all. This is done as a spot. That is, I'm just using the white, I'm not using color. Our opacity, our white clarity, both excellent. And the white has the hallmarks of latex ink. It's not yellowed, it doesn't crack, it's not brittle. It's elastic, flexible, super brilliant white, and very opaque. And that's all just in the quality element. But there's another element to white printing that's absolutely critical to understand, and that is ease of use, because that's been the bugbear of white printing. Printing with white inks is just difficult traditionally. Even if you get the opacity, it's still, it's constantly dropping out, it's not ready. With latex, it is on-demand white. And the reason you get on-demand white is because we built an entire macro circulation system for the white ink. You notice there's two nozzles on the box of white ink. It's got its own bag inside of it. Why? Because it has a terminus point. We have to circulate white ink continuously in the background all the time. We recommend that you keep your white ink printers plugged in. You know, if it gets unplugged, it's not the end of the world, but you want to circulate that white. We even built special rotation chambers to be able to put the white print heads in the chamber when you're not using them, and then that rotates. In so, so then what's inside the printer, printer carriage? Imposter print heads. They're just replacement heads. They're there so that they occupy a space so that we can have a, a continuously, continuously cycling white ink. When you need the white print heads, so let's say I take the white print heads at the end of this presentation, I put them in here, the whole process takes about a minute. And I even have a nice little walkthrough for you. Watch this. All right, I'm going to try to open the lid, initiate, well, initiate the change, take the, in this case, I'm taking the white print heads out and putting the imposter print heads in it tells me to lift the lid and then this will also give you a nice shot of the print head arrangement very clever easy access no issues whatsoever come on 
Get that in there. You know, if you get this between the so time the song loops, you'll be a hero. On delay, on delay. I tried to do this in less than a minute. Okay, now you're in. Great. You got the white print heads there. You put the imposter print heads in. So we're going home on Friday. Close the lid. It's about to loop on you. Shut it. All you have to do is put it into the little rotation chamber. Oh, you are so close. So close, but not quite. <laughs> that guy just needs to move on it. <laughs> it's that easy. That's white. And when you take them out on Friday, it's about a minute. And then you come in on Monday and you have white on demand. Well, Tim, what if I don't print for two weeks? Yeah, what of it? Just let the print heads spin. They're safe. You're not wasting anything. You're good to go. It's perfect. And then when you want it, huh? optical drop detector, it checks all the nozzles, identifies that everything is perfect. You're going to go. You'll be printing perfect, beautiful, solid white all the time of all types. I mean, you can do spot white, for example, printing white directly onto metallic films in combination with colors. That's going to be nice and fast, and you get this beautiful artistic effect. So you can print on all kinds of colored media with white ink, either putting the white down with the colors or putting the colors on top of the white. Now the white acts as your white base point. That works great. You can also use it to print. Oh, since it's here, I just want to show you something really cool. When, when HP developed white ink, You've got a whole circulation system, and you almost have to treat white ink as a separate printer because it's not just like any other printer. CMYK, light sand, light magenta, yeah, that's, that's, we got that down. But white ink is like all different. The chemistry of the white ink is different. Everything about white ink, you almost have to think of it as, I got to do a different operation. For example, this is our maintenance cartridge. Now, this last... Same length, 14 liters, but in the middle here, there is a separate portion for the white ink print heads. I'm like, well, why do you need a separate portion? Because white ink, white ink print heads need to be wiped with a moist towelette. You can't use a dry towel. Oh, so where are you gonna get the moisture from? Oh, we got that. So we put a little water thing there with distilled water and it just spritzes it. That's clever. You have to think through the whole white ink flow. You have to circulate the print heads. You have to ensure that air does not get in the lines. You have to ensure that the white ink is always moving. And you have to ensure that when you do wipe the print heads, you spritz and keep the, keep the uh, print heads moist. And it's just that simple. Let's get back to the media tiles. <laughs> you ever want to do daylight white, three layer? CMYK, 160% white in between CMYK again. The best you'll ever see. Right out of the generics. I load the Avery. I clone the generic film. Name it Avery. Couple adjustments on vacuum. Perfect. We've built all the presets right into the printer. Spot color, 160, 100%. Under flood, over flood. 60 or 100% options, and then daylight white, three layer. All of them are available, absolutely prints gorgeous, easy to use. So here's one, this is done on a clear with a white liner. All of those available. I've been doing static cling and a lot of it. So here's static cling where I printed general formulations and this is printed, it looks gorgeous, this is printed white mirrored with a white on the back and that can go right into the window perfect you could do the white at 100 percent, but in most cases like that i do the white at 60 it's perfect it speeds it up it gives it a perfect level of translucence it's just right or you want to print directly to it that's white under flood 
you're not going to see many things that this almost looks like you're printing right on white cling. Why? Because our white ink is so white, it's so good that I'm not in the least bit concerned that it's going to throw off the whole white point and the prints are going to look kind of sad. You know, you've seen a lot of prints where they're printing with the what printing on the white ink and it doesn't look good. Ours looks spectacular. This is clear film again, printing white at 60% on the back. And you can choose whatever percentage you want. And we have a wonderful set of videos that my um my colleague Lee Manovich made on YouTube. Look up Lee Manovich YouTube white ink. He walks you through everything. I mean, the greatest tutorials of all time. Just follow his instructions and you will be the czar of white ink. Because he'll walk you through it in Illustrator, he'll walk you through it in Photoshop, show you how to set it up, how to name it, and then you can bring it into Onyx and say, do I want spot, under flood, over flood, or do I want daylight white? We set it all up for you. You can't miss. It's easy to use. It's reliable. It circulates continuously. It's on demand, maybe five to eight minutes, depending on how frequently I use it. And if you don't use it, you just let it sit aside and run the printer with CMYK, Light Cyan, Light Magenta. We put a lot of effort and a lot of thought into white ink. And we actually deserve a lot of credit. I think we're going to change the whole market with our white ink. We introduced it with a flatbed. That changed the market. Now we've introduced it with roll-to-roll -roll printers, and it's going to change it again. A red light in the middle of my presentation? You know, this aggression will not stand, man. I mean, the printer probably only warned me like 20 times. And, uh, you know, now it's time to replace the maintenance cartridge. So I just took it out, and I'm going to put a new one in. And I'll show you how to do this because it's actually very easy. And it says you have to put it in. Okay, very simple. And then close the door. And we'll be ready to roll here in just a second. But I figured I'd use the opportunity, take out the existing maintenance cartridge, put a fresh one in. Printer's going to handle everything. The maintenance cartridge serves a purpose. Unlike a lot of solvent printers, we don't have to keep purging ink through it. All it's doing is wiping the heads, and all it does is cap the heads. There is going to be some residual ink in it, and that's mostly just from wiping the heads to make sure that are kept nice and clean, and all of the nozzles are completely unobstructed. So everything is good. Finishing and replacement. As soon as that's done, notice, huh? No more red light. Now I have a green light. That's what I like to see. So the printer and I are aligned again, and we can move on with our presentation. I think what I want to do next is I want to show you the printers themselves. Lift up the lid and take a look inside and see how everything goes inside. This was a nice little segue. Everything is there. Job queue, reprint, one, ah, there we go, blinking green light. Thank you very much for this little detour and walk with me. Now we are over in front of Ringo. I have the 700 right here and I wanna lift up this lid and I wanna show you what's inside of it, except I can't because the material is threaded through the curing unit, which allows me to show you the very first kind of cool thing we have. First cool thing we have is a brand new, high quality, strong, durable, rotary inline cutter, which will cut, yeah, which will cut heavy wall covering, which is what this is. This is a very nice heavy Vescom wall covering. Prints beautiful, looks great, love it. It's canvas, cuts banner, cuts everything really except really soft fabric. Soft textiles, no. Everything else, absolutely. So that new uh, that new cutter is something. And now that that's done, I can lift up the lid. Oh, the door. Um, it takes a little getting used to the door. I call it the impertinent door. It's positioned, you know, for me. And um, 
it opens <laughs> and uh, it takes a little getting used to. It's all automatic. There's an interface here. I hit done and then the door closes again. So when you kind of walk up, you know, and then you're not paying attention, you'll eventually get the hang of it. It's kind of fun. So let's lift this up and take a look inside, shall we? First thing you notice, super easy to load. I mean, you can't mess, you can't mess it up. And we have an auto load feature. I like it a lot. It's great. It really does work well. You bring in the media, it loads it forward. It tells you to close the door. It does everything you need. It gets all the measurements right. It does the skew alignment. It's perfect. I don't use it for everything. There are some materials. I recommend you have materials with a straight line cut. I recommend materials that aren't opaque or, or excuse me, aren't translucent or clear. Unless it's something beat up along the front, you can manually load. That's an option. Some cases that make sense. Use your reason. But stuff like this wallpaper, oh, this auto loads perfectly. Everything is right there for you. You can see it. You don't skew it. It's just wonderful to load. This also is probably a good opportunity for me to show you. If I can show you right here. On the bottom, all you have to do when you get to a take up is just push it forward. The take up has its own internal motor, right? It's like a little motor in there. They both do. And that senses when it has tension and then it releases. And every material will have a variable tension. It gives us just enough tension to put it on the take up, but not so much that it could affect the accuracy of panel printing. See, the printers are really focused for high value panel tile jobs, like I have behind me. This is all done with Phototex on very short turnaround. You know, we need 20 panels. They all have to match perfectly. They have to be the exact same length. Everything has to line up. We got step and repeats. Colors have to be matched. We have Pantones. All that has to be right. And the take up reel is a big part of it. No more dancer bar. No more tension on it. All of that is gone. The spindle is system. So there's no spindles. You have a two inch and a three inch converter. It works beautiful. Very elegant. Now there's a little bit different the, the 700 here is two pieces, top and bottom, okay? Sometimes I have to uh, get out the trusty knee pads because I have to get down there and tape it up. And I'm a big fella and I don't bend so well anymore. The 800 series is a little different. And I'll show you in a picture because it's easier to see it. With the 800 series, it rotates back, you know, a lot like our uh, 560, 570 series. So you pull the lever and then it tilts back. And then it has the same take up, the same accuracy, the same built in internal motor, all of that. But there's a little bit of difference between the two, and that's what I wanted to show you. At this point, I use them interchangeably, but that is a little noticeable. The next thing, which is a little hard for you to see, so I'll help you with that. We have a completely redesigned platen, completely redesigned pinch rollers, new drive rollers. Yes, our engineering team has been very, very busy. All of this is new. It's been redesigned. It's also then supporting a completely new sort of tile-based, removable, just pull the lever. I think of them like tiles. And so you can take the platen off, okay, real simple. And then what you do is you put in your ink collectors. Now, a note, our ink collectors are an accessory. They don't come with the printer, but you can order them. So if you want to print on porous fabric or porous textiles, then you would put in the ink collectors. Otherwise, no. But that's how you do it. It's pretty cool. That's all completely been redesigned. We even had brand new edge guards. I'll show you a picture of the edge guard. There you go. Edge guards are longer. They cover more area. Now you only need edge guards in very, I've had to use them twice. Some raw edged window perf and a very heavy wall covering heavy where I'm doing the calibrations and it needed to be held down. All the other rolls, let's say 60, 65 rolls, no edge guards. Do not use them unless there's a compelling reason to use them. Don't just habitually slide them on. No, edge guards, no, unless you have to. They're a last resort, but and they are new. 
So there may be some materials where they're necessary. The same is really kind of true on the generation three latex. That's my advice for edge guards, but that's more so with this particular edge guard. So those are new, those are different. That's an innovation. This lid is an innovation. It makes it easy. We have tested this. We had a robot do it like thousands and thousands and thousands of times to make sure that this works perfectly. And it really does. You get used to this a little bit. It's real nice. Now, there's another thing under here, which I want you to see. These are fans. And these fans are there for a reason. The reason the fans are there, and I'll give you a little better shot of them so you can really see them. The fans are there because we're creating a new print zone. It is called a homogenous print zone. Well, Tim, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Well, I have a catchy little number and a visual to help you. I don't know if it's going to help entirely, but it is a catchy little number. The fans bring temperature into the print zone, not much, and it has a couple functions. One is it does have a degree of evaporative. So if you're printing on paper, for example, it's taking a little bit of that liquidity out, the water, in the print zone, not much, 40 degrees centigrade, but it's uniform. It uses a little temperature and it's very uniform. What we know is that if we can get this print zone to have a very consistent temperature for everything that runs through at all times, and then also with the improvements and modifications we've made with our print head, the print head energy, the control of the energy in the print heads, we want to have strict control over everything in the printer and everything through the print zone so that you always get color consistency. For example, if you're doing tiling with a 12 pass mode, we will specify under one delta E consistently doing a color calibration. We want you to print the same color at the beginning of a roll, the middle of a roll, the end of a roll, and then even a week later when you load it in, do a closed loop color calibration, dials it back in, you print consistent again. Having this homogenous print zone is a big key to that. What that also means is while it's printing, don't lift that, don't lift this. This isn't a pause button anymore, sorry. Took me a minute. I didn't make the mistake. I let somebody else make the mistake and warn me about it, but I would have because that's the pause button, right? No. This now is an enclosed climate controlled space. Think like uh, you're in a car, you're driving in the middle of summer, or you're someplace way up in Northern Canada and it's either freezing cold and it took you all this time to get your cabin perfectly acclimated. And then the kid in back rolls down the window. All right, roll the window, put the locks on the window, don't do that again. That's what this is. If you need to pause it, you can pause it from the panel here. And you know, I may as well send a print since we're here. It's always kind of fun to watch the printer print. And you can print back. Some medias don't work from the pinch rollers as well as others. This stuff seems to work great. And so I just send jobs through the pinch rollers. Oh, I got to tell it how many, just one. But that's how this new enclosed curing unit works. And I think that really helps a great deal. It gives us more advantages to print consistent color. Our focus with these printers is on color consistency, panels, all the specialty things you can do with white, for example, printing on, you know, I'm printing on all these unbelievably nice wall coverings that happen to have colors. And we're printing with white and we're printing color on the white and we're printing just white and we're doing all these design elements and the designer's like, oh, this stuff is great. And then you have all the vehicle wrap people going, hey, you mean I can turn that anti-scratch off and just get this incredible bond? Yeah. And I can print super long tile jobs and all the colors are perfect? Yep. And then you have all the people who want to do like roll-ups, right? And they're like, hey, this roll-up, I need this. This is super smooth gray back. I need this to have no indication of temperature whatsoever. Look at that. Flawless. I mean, the print on the front side looks great, but what I'm looking at is, does that gray look perfect? And I'm like, yeah, that gray back looks perfect. So we're getting incredible rich gamut, beautiful rich colors, and we have such a, such a, a lower imprint from the temperature 
because we're running the temperatures at such lower points because the ink cure is a lot easier, we're getting more color pop using less of it. Warms up, super easy, no maintenance other than the you know maintenance cartridge right in the middle of the presentation. Again, I own that one. Print heads that are replaceable, water-based inks. We've been very, very busy, folks. We've been innovating. Oh, can't miss this. Oh, can't miss this either. We have a new OMAS. It's faster, it reads better, wider aperture. Okay, new OMAS because all of our patented components always get upgraded. And then we have a spectrophotometer built in. Spectrophotometer allows us to have perfect color. And then we built an entirely new color suite to support it. It's called Ingenium. And it's nice, really nice. Normally, I build all my own. Sometimes people call them profiles. I call them presets, but you get the idea. I build my own color work. So I would load this wall covering up, and then I would say, well, I'm going to go build, get my Barbieri or my x right out, and I'm going to build all my own profiles. You know what I do now? I look on the media locator. We have a ton of stuff on there already. Oh, it's not there. Okay. Well, do we have a generic? Yeah, we have one here. It's called wall covering. And under wall covering, it says, is it PVC? Is it paper? Is it non-woven? It's paper. Okay, well, we'll choose that. And we'll just clone it. And that way I can adjust vacuum or whatever and maybe make some extra modes. I rename it. And then I print it. I do a closed loop color calibration first. It dials it right in, maintains the color. That's my fingerprint. And then I send the jobs. And I'm looking at the color. I'm looking at the gray balance. I'm looking at it and going, wow, wow. I don't have to do anything because our color scientist did it all for us. And if I need to do another ICC, fine. Print it. Onboard Spectra reads it. Ingenium makes me a perfect gray balance, beautiful looking print every time. So increasingly, I'm using all the generics. I use them straight up or I clone them. Occasionally, I download from the media locator. It is rare anymore that I'm building end-to-end -end my own color. I have not run a single built-my-own pro profile using an external device yet. I haven't needed to. I'm getting such spectacular results. And to my mind, I love that. I don't want to have to reinvent color. I'll let our uh, super color geniuses in 8HP do that for me. And then I can run a whole bunch of printers and also work more on my maintenance and make sure I have my supplies filled up before I do presentations. So away it goes. The door is about to open here. So I kind of kind of stand back a little bit. And uh, while I'm here, I want to show you a little bit these um, beautiful prints. <laughs> So it's almost impossible for me to communicate to you how good the colors look. So what we're going to try to do here is I have a 12 pass, an 8 pass, a 6 pass, and then also a 4 pass. These are all done on an 800. It was all done on an Avery Gloss vinyl. I did them right one after one another. This was all built right on the printer. Now if you look closely here in the 4 pass, you can just sort of see a little bit of what would be called like pass banding. That's very difficult to see on banner, and then banner is going to be viewed at a little distance. But what you should notice here is I'm printing at slightly different densities, but even at the high speed densities in six pass, the colors are rich, they are clear, we are not reducing ink, I am not losing color gamut. I have beautifully balanced grayscale, and at six pass, in which I'm running on an 800, 270 square feet an hour in production modes and it looks great. You can use 8 pass if you had to hit some, you know, more outlying pantones and we should be within 3 delta E of most pantones. 12 pass I use to get really good tiling modes and use 8 as well. And then 4 pass is pretty much everything that I'm printing now for banner. It's just not necessary for me with a banner at three feet. I can't see it. All of the, the photographic images look great, and the banner is going to be hung up and held up. That's running 388 square feet an hour with completely rich saturated color on the 800 series.
you can't look at it like a magazine, but that's not what it's for. You can go to Six Pass and all that goes away. At Six Pass, our interlacing technology smooths all of that over completely, but you're still at 270 square feet an hour. So the printers are fast and they have color and they have balanced color. I think you'll be very impressed when you look at the prints. Please get with your, uh, your channel partners, your reseller, reach out to me. I'll be happy to send you some of these prints I do because I'm just completely amazed at what I'm seeing at the speeds I'm seeing it with everything dry, everything laying nice and flat, no struggles, no fuss. Just changing that temperature, changing the, uh, the color gamut and really getting that deep gamut out of a six color printer Beautiful, beautiful technology. A couple things to note before I go. At this time, they do not support double-sided printing. I know. Uh, we are looking into it. It's more complicated than you think. I know we have double-sided currently on the 365 and the 500. We do not offer it at these at this time. It's a little bit more of a daunting engineering feat with all of the new developments, new drive rollers, pinch rollers than it looks, but it is something that we are aware of and we know a lot of you would like that, but not right now. Number two, and I'll kind of send you off with this. So when you, uh, when you load in white ink, you have to shake them. And I'm just about out of white ink on uh, Paul over there. So you have to shake this, and it says right on the box, you have to shake this 60 times. I think that's what it says. And this one says like 60 times. Like I can't count to 60. I don't have the attention span for that. So I have, what did Polonius say about Hamlet? Though this be madness, there is a method to his madness. My method is. Cuban music. And all you have to do is just play it and shake it. And when the song ends, you're good. And you can even get like two of the whites. <laughs> there we go. Thank you everybody for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for indulging me. Thank you for bearing with me while I run out of my maintenance cartridge. Thank you for taking a look at our new technology. It's fabulous. You're really going to like it. And uh, everyone stay out safe out there. Try to get in the sun. And I will see you all very, very soon.